When it comes to quirky horror games, Lethal Company absolutely rocked the Twitch and YouTube scene. And for good reason. Between the incredible concept and the unbelievable sound design, this game was truly destined for success. The almost roguelike style of gameplay with a strong emphasis on survival and deadlines, it was easily approachable but still challenging, making it fun but continuously interesting, even in later stages of the game. On top of that, the vast modding community made it easy to breathe new life in the game when you did finally get bored of the loop. Combine that with the iconic enemies like the Luke Gremlin and the Texture Deficit Slender Man, and it's no wonder why the game reached the heights that it did. Fast forward six months, and we have a new kid on the block. Content Warning. It's a game that follows an incredibly similar formula, with quotas, individual enemies, a roguelike structure, and a strong emphasis on survival. The main difference, though, is how you make your money. Instead of collecting scraps to make deadlines, you take a camera into the depths with you and try to reach internet fame by recording monsters and funny moments, essentially baking virality into the gameplay itself. It's a genius idea. And as you already know, this game also absolutely blew up. Now I feel it goes without saying that these games are incredibly similar, but I'm gonna say it anyway. The games are incredibly similar. They're both heavily based on making money and spending that money to make survivability and reaching quotas easier. You lose a lot when you die, and if you fail the quota, then that's the end of the game. The main real differences are the consequences of death, with Lethal Company removing all the scrap from your ship upon team death as opposed to just losing the footage and day in content warning. There's the setting, with Lethal Company being set in space and content warning being set in the old world, and the way you make your money. With Lethal Company being scrap sales and content warning being the whole YouTube success thing that I touched on earlier. This formula that these two games use so well is individual enough where you could almost consider it a new genre of horror game. And honestly, Extraction Horror seems a fitting name. You go into missions, try to get as much as possible, and if you die in the mission, you lose everything. Otherwise, you extract, with the whole roguelike thing adding a necessary level of difficulty and an extra reason to push yourself and risk losing all your progress. Now, the first game I can think of that more or less uses this is Phasmophobia. Now, granted, it doesn't follow the genre to the letter, but it has enough similarities where it deserves an honorable mention. In the game, you launch investigations on locations, bringing equipment in with you, and if you discover of what type of ghost is haunting the premises, then you can actually gain money to spend on more equipment. The whole extraction part of this comes when you bring in a lot of gear in the location with you, and if you die, then all of this is lost and you've effectively lost money by attempting the investigation. Now, if you are unfortunate enough to have the mother of all losing streaks, then that can lead to you needing to go in with next to no equipment and an accountant begging you to declare bankruptcy. But you can still launch into investigations, there's not exactly a quota to hit and no hard line of failure. The game just revolves around its economy. This is really the key difference that sets it apart from the other games, with a hard line being incredibly important in the other two. Now this brings me to Lethal Company and Content Warning. They've both absolutely perfected this genre. The quota system is an amazing incentive, pushing you to make riskier decisions, and the economy being wrapped up in the game's objective makes purchases a lot more thought out, as opposed to the defaults you'll often pick in Phasmophobia. With Lethal Company taking this a step further by making you decide between short-term survivability and long-term insurance in hitting goals, by only letting you sell stuff when you're actually paying off a quota, and not including the additional funds in the next target. And the respective markets of each game also play a crucial role, such as late game Lethal Company, where you'll often have one person on the ship with a walkie talkie and everyone else being guided around, taking a big chunk of risk away from dying, as the person on comms can just fly away and keep the gear they have if everyone else dies on location. Content Warning has a different approach, however, with healing items and equipment such as flashlights helping survival, but also the addition of emotes and new microphones, giving each video a better chance of gaining popularity and hype, literally adding more opportunity for making money and hitting quotas. I feel at this point it's safe to say that these games have seemingly made a new genre of horror, focused on extraction and growth. With enough creative freedom in the genre's limitations that some really interesting concepts can come out of it. Content Warning already shows a lot of this individuality, with the basis being internet virality, really showing what can actually be done with this concept. I will say, when the game initially came out, I assumed it would be a low-budget clone of Lethal Company, but after playing, it still is its own thing, just follows a certain formula. It reminds me of when Dark Souls blew up, then every hard, melee-focused game was labelled as Souls-like, 
But when GTA got popular and suddenly every open world game for a while was labeled a GTA clone, it seems we're right on the cusp of this new genre, and frankly I'm excited to see what comes next in regards to creativity and refinement, as this could really go in some interesting directions. I guess for now though we'll just have to stick to what we've got. Which isn't a bad thing at all, as both of these games are a lot of fun with friends. I think it's good to focus on stuff like this while the games industry is in such a record slump, because it's a solid reminder that there are still good and individual games being made, they're just slightly overshadowed by the whole cesspit that AAA has become. Though I am speaking a bit soon here, maybe in the next content warning update the camera will be locked behind a tiered battle pass. 